Hey everyone, this is Derek here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at some footage from Rivals Battlegrounds, a fellow PUBG mobile creator. I'll leave his channel link in the video description down below. He gives us a good number of tips and tricks to improve your gameplay in just about five minutes, so I'm going to do as well as I can to explain what he's showing on the screen, what I agree with, what I disagree with, and hopefully this video will help you become a better PUBG mobile player. First off, he's talking about changing seats and saying how this can be used to confuse enemies. This is true. However, I'd argue that the most important aspect to changing seats is that you can engage somebody uh, while you are moving in the vehicle without having to exit it. So if you're driving along fast, you see somebody, you want to engage them, switch seats to a passenger seat, engage the person, and then switch back to the driver's seat. Because if you have to stop the vehicle first, well, that's going to kill a lot of time. And if you don't stop the vehicle, you're going to take a lot of damage. Next, he's mentioning that uh, depending on what side of the car you're sitting on, this is the side that you're going to exit from. So if somebody's off to your left and you want to engage them, make sure you switch to the right side of the car first. That way, when you exit it, you'll exit it from the right side of the vehicle. You have the vehicle in the middle, and this is a great way to uh, let the vehicle take the damage, not you. So two good tips right away as far as vehicle use in PUBG Mobile. Next, he's going to be talking about jumping off of tall buildings. Another tip that many of you guys probably know, but a very useful one. And that is that if you jump off a high building more than around three stories in the game, you lose health. That's not good. So you can instead mitigate this by catching the ledge of the building before uh, just jumping straight down to the ground. So instead of making one giant jump and losing health, you make a couple, uh, it could be two or more little jumps and these jumps are small enough that you won't lose health. So this is super important in like Miramar where you might be uh, way up in a structure in like Los Leones, for example. Here, all you have to do is take uh, one little jump in the middle and then jump again, and you'll see that you don't lose any health because you're jumping about two stories instead of four right away. So yeah, just another good tip and trick. I use this a lot in my videos, but I never really explained it before. And as a result, I definitely wanted to mention that because if you didn't know it, well, now you do. And here's a great opportunity to say, uh, if you enjoy this sort of content, definitely consider subscribing to Derek G, my channel, as well as his, because uh, we tend to post a lot of informative stuff like this. So next up, grass rendering. This is super, super important in Orangel or Wrangle, however you want to pronounce it. Grass is rendered about 150 meters. Sometimes it's 140, sometimes it's 150. It's right in that range. So basically, if you're beyond that distance, the grass does not render. This means if you're snaking or if you're prone in the grass and somebody is further away from that than you, then they are going to be able to see you just sitting out there, no cover at all. So as you can see, uh, what he did there was use enemies ahead. That tells you how far away an enemy is. And he's just doing this to show us where the grass stops rendering. You can see there it is. If you're in the area that's rendered, uh, it's hard to see you. If you're beyond that, you're just sitting on a hillside and super, super easy to see. So again, grass rendering distance is the same for everybody, regardless of your uh, display settings. At one point, if you were on smooth, it rendered a shorter distance. Now it renders the same for everyone. And uh, as a result, you know, if you're proning, especially in those final circles, you can see, look at that. That guy is just crawling. He thinks he's hiding and he is not hiding at all because he's beyond the render range. And it's an easy kill with that car 98. So there is an excellent example of why you want to use hardcover instead. These are things that uh, do not disappear. And I'm pretty sure he explains this later in the video. So we'll get to it then. But basically, uh, guns contain ammo. This is something I also have mentioned in the past, the ammo trick, I call it. Basically, uh, when you pick up a weapon, it's going to have a standard capacity magazine loaded in it already. So this SCAR should have 30 rounds in it. Even though there are no 5.56 uh, boxes there, you can see the SCAR now has, five, has uh, 30 rounds. So if you swap out weapons, so if you find another one, you know, say you find another scar in a different room, you swap to that one, you're going to drain the 30 from that and then you'll have 60. So that's why you'll see me sometimes just pick up a weapon and then put it right back down because what I'm doing is I'm grabbing that gear. So he actually doesn't mention this. So I'm going to mention it now. What you want to do is always use uh, rocks and bushes as cover instead of grass because those render in regardless of distance. This last tip, I kind of agree with him on. It depends on the situation of the game. So basically, higher level gear uh, armor, so helmets and vests, prevent more damage. So they block 30%, 40%, or 55% of damage. So if you have a really damaged vest, for example, and you find a lower level one that's new, if it's early in the game, I recommend picking up the fresh one because you're going to get hit a bunch of times. But 
Later in the game, I recommend sticking with the highest level you can find because it's going to block more of that alpha damage, that first shot, and in the final circle, that's more what you have to worry about. So especially with level three gear, if you have a level three piece of equipment, either a helmet or a vest that is super damaged, I recommend sticking with that over a fresh level two. Most of the time, like I said, once you're in the last, like, I don't know, 15, 20 people-ish, you want to stick with the highest level gear possible. But if you take a lot of damage early in the game, say you drop Mikado, your vest gets messed up. It was a level two vest and it gets super messed up and you find a fresh level one while you're looting the apartments, I would recommend switching to it just because you're going to be able to take more shots on that vest before you die. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So there you have it. There's my advice on these tips and tricks. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree with what I said? Disagree? And uh, yeah, definitely just start up the discussion and hopefully we can all become better PUBG mobile players. So my name is Derek G. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like I said before, definitely consider subscribing. Uh, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends too. It really does help the channel grow and I certainly appreciate it. So I hope to see you on the battlefield soon or in my Discord server, which I'll leave a link to down below.